All right, guys, this is your trigger warning. So uh, this episode is going to feature um, some not so fun depictions of sexual assault, some really not so fun depictions of racism, and uh, some really, really not so fun images of violence against minorities. Um, also, uh, Army Hammer. We talk about that again. So uh, you can skip this whole episode if that is not the topics for you. Otherwise, gird your loins. How awful. I'm ready whenever you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just waiting on you, boo. Okay. You're the big fan of the press record. Don't say anything. Nope. I just hit record. Like, like Joseph like Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, man. Oh. Hit record again by heart. What a cool thing. That was a cool thing. You know, it's people, thing. You know people give him shit for it. Really? Yeah. They think that he's exploiting artists and using their work for free, but... I he think does, he's giving them a platform. Yeah, he doesn't take a profit. Mm. And he gives them an artist community. People just like, I don't know, people like making everything negative. That is accurate. Everything humanly possible. Negativo. I you're, thought that was a spider. I got yeah. very alarmed. You're uh, you're wearing my favorite sweater of yours. This is my favorite sweater? Yeah, it's my it's my favorite sweater. I mean, this is your favorite. <laughs> you know what? Uh, our producer today came into uh, our office and uh-huh. looked at me and said, Hi. I just wanted to say hi to you. And I was like, hi. I love that color on you. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, thanks. I'm just getting like so many compliments. Well, it's a good color on you. It's a burnt orange, like a (laughs) 70s couch orange. I rolled up the sleeves because they were dangling in my drink. Oh, I'm sorry for you. In my ginger ale. Don't worry. Don't get excited. We're still in dry January. But next week. Next week we drink. We drink. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There was a, a production assistant that I worked with once who um, played the nicest prank on me ever. He told everybody to tell me I had a nice shirt that day. Oh, yeah. Um, that and, was the most innocent prank in the history of the world. He was getting a kick out of it, apparently. I don't know. It was a whole thing. And everybody told me I had a nice shirt. And then there was somebody who came in and said, like, the last person that came in said, your shirt looks great on you today. Or like, you have a great shirt. Mm-hmm. And I looked at uh, my boss and I was like, something's up. <laughs> Why does everybody think I have a nice shirt today? <laughs> That's production. <laughs> it's very pure. Antics, I guess. Oh, anyway, who are you? Oh, yeah, I'm B. I guess uh, that's important. I'm Tanya Lee, if you didn't know, already know. The drill. I'm really hyper. Why? I don't know. I'm okay. tired. Oh, okay. Like slap happy. Uh, uh, you missed. Uh, you missed drama right before the... Right before the podcast, I, I almost lit our apartment on fire. Yeah, you lit bacon on fire somehow. I didn't light the bacon on fire. I lit the paper towel the bacon was going on. Oh, right. <laughs> on fire. Did it like sneak under the, the yeah, pan? Yeah, it snuck under the pan and then lit on fire. And my reaction was apparently, oh dear. Um, and then I tried to like hit it with a spatula and that just um, <laughs> multiplied the fire. You like fanned the fire. I, I was like, oh, what happens when there's fire? I see people on TV smack it. <laughs> so I was smacking it and that just created more fire. Yeah, it was bad. It was a bad idea. Not a great plan, but I. So then there well, ended up being water on our bacon. But um, oh, that might be why it was a little less flavorful. <laughs> Enjoy your watered down bacon. Yeah, it's watery bacon. It's oh, fine. gee whiz. I'm looking at my squatty potty right now. Maybe you should save that for your something wonderful <laughs> later. <laughs> looking at my squatty potty. <laughs> yeah. What is that noise? Moosh is eating very aggressively. Is, that, is he eating his food? No, she's right there. Is he eating his food though? Or is he, he, is he eating... find the bacon? What are you doing? Oh gosh, Moosh. What is he doing? Found a nail file. Oh dear. Oh, dear. oh now I know where you got the oh dear from. <laughs> You? Pardon me. Ugh. Moosh likes to find nail files. Nail thinks... files, specifically. Yeah. It's his, it's his weird fetish. Moosh, you cannot play on the job. Oh, oh, on this week of Army Hammer is awful. Shall we update him? Sure. Um, let's see. Are we are. Did we already touch on the fact he abuses his dog, and that's been documented? No. Um, also, that's true. Also been documented... Um, that he has tortured and killed animals since he was a child. He claims to have eaten eaten the hearts of these animals. We're just giving you live awful updates. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, today at awful. This just in, and a not at all surprising twist, 
he has sexually assaulted numerous women of color. And uh, his disgusting fan base has attacked these women of color. One of them, the most prominent voice of uh, his victims, tried to kill herself and ended up in the hospital. So um, people who do that should be charged. They should be charged. Did he say something about wanting to role play, like be like a cop with one of them or something? Yeah. um, Yeah. He wanted to um, yeah, play cop versus a black woman with one of them. Um, He wanted to (laughs) have sex at a BLM protest. Like, can you just hear yourself? And like, yeah, he does. He literally does not give any shits. Like, like not a single shit. Not one. Like you know that what like, you're saying is so messed up and not in a fucking sexy way. Sorry no. for my French, but not sexy. No, not sexy. You know you're being terrible and, and you he's like, literally well, don't care. Oh, and then the text message I sent you today of him admitting that uh, he fantasizes about roofing his wife. Yeah, that one. So that's that good. he could go and have sex with his mistress for hours um, and then come home before she wakes up yeah. to his to his drugged. Wife. Mother of his children. Mother of his children, yes. Who's taking care of the kids? Maybe yeah. they have child care, but... I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like... I, yeah, I don't know. See, like, in the grand scheme of horrible, horrible white men, um, there's Shia LaBeouf, right? Who also terrible. Yes. Uh, abusive. Not great. He has, he has the excuse umbrella of past childhood trauma and alcoholism, right? Sure. He's at least apologizing and owning it. Saying, yes, I, I did these horrible things. I am battling alcoholism. I'm a piece of shit. I'm going to do better. I am sorry for my actions. Okay? Right. You have that version of that. terrible white man. Um, and then you have Army Hammer white man who um, has been told of his horribleness and his response is basically lulls. LOL. Oh, yeah. He doesn't give the, a crap. Uh, hilarious. Uh, mm, mm, gonna keep doing it. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Um, but my favorite moment of levity out of this whole situation was when um, Army's whistleblower admitted to having sex dreams about Timothy Chalamet. We called it Timothy Chalamil. Uh, Timothy Chalamil. He what has a, a meal and a snack. What a Timo snack. <laughs> He's a Timo snack. <laughs> exactly. Oh, if he were dear. a Dunkaroo, I would double dip. Uh, do you want to address um, anything since? My, my Freudian slip from the ah, last yes. episode? Ah, uh-huh, Yes. And one I did not pick up, but our friend Jamie gets the credit for. She texted me after listening to our last episode today and was like, um, Tanya called Mickey Rooney Mickey Rorick. Sure did. Two very different Mickeys. I 1000% meant Mickey, Mickey Rooney. Rooney. But in my uh, sleeplessness and very exhausting. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking about breakfast at Tiffany's and the very stereotypical racist yes. depiction of the Asian neighbor. It was, it was Mickey Rooney that yeah, played. It was Mickey Rooney that played him. Um, yes. Not Mickey Not Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke was great in The Wrestler. Yeah. Love Mickey Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apologies to you, He's uh, Hollywood's Sir favorite uh, crazy person. Remember when his dog died and he was really sad? No, I don't remember I'll anything. Never, I'll never forget that. Really? I've never seen someone mourn their dog so publicly and so Justin Theroux. Oh, yeah. Orlando Bloom. Yeah. Oh, no. I no, got real sad. sad. That's like the kind of awful I won't touch on. No. Dog's dying. I just no. can't. Woof. Woof. Literally. Yeah. Okay. What are our topics? Oh, we have our... Oh, it's it's always the same. We always pull these two together. I think it's because they know. They know. The, the cards, they know. Paranormal. And true crime. Yeet. And I've got a... Did you just yeet? Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for you to skirt, but... Skirt. Yeet. Skirt. We're Hold up. Smack out. <laughs> Hey, hey. Okay. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this is already way too Timothy. And okay, we're only ten minutes in. Is there uh, such like thing I'll... as way too Timothy? No, no, no. I'd love to be way too Timothy. Oh man, hmm. I don't know what that means. But you what? You know what? You folk, you interpret. Hey, we hit five thousand downloads today. That's fun. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but we're not really anybody. So that means a lot to us. Thanks, guys. Interact with us more. Tell us your your stories Please. email us at how awful podcast at gmail.com what is this or if, or if you're tanya just just email us at gmail <laughs> <laughs> we own all of gmail it's ours now just Blah. at gmail it comes directly to us i promise you well, anyway gosh. okay i'm very looking okay to i am true first crime. it is my turn and i'm doing true crime and mm. it is ha so buckle up 
Okay. We're going to go back in time to 1978. Okay. 15 year old Mary Vincent. Okay. Does that. I got a little nervous because I started to do research for true crime today. I know when you said it, yours was uh, gnarly. I was like, what if there's a chance that she picked Mary Vincent? I normally don't until I know that which one you've done, Mm -hmm. but I kind of forgot Mm -hmm. and I just realized, but it's not the same. Okay, good. Go ahead. Mary Vincent. I don't know who this is. 1978, 15 year old Mary Vincent living in Las Vegas with her parents who worked for casinos as a dealer and machine repairman. She skipped school often, eventually moving in with her boyfriend in Sausalito, California. Remember, she's 15. Until he was apprehended on rape charges. Uh, Oh, I couldn't find his age, but I'm going to guess he was much older and these were statutory rape charges. He had a place of his own. Um, Yeah. So Mary returned to Las Vegas, but her parents were going through a divorce and Mary couldn't really take the arguments anymore. So. She did what every teen in the 60s and 70s did. She ran away to hitchhike to Los Angeles to stay with her grandfather. So Every? Huh? Every teenager did this? In the 60s and 70s, it sure does seem like it was every. (laughs) It does seem that way. It does appear to be every. Moosh, look at me. Moosh, look me in the eyes. Don't you ever run away. Don't hitchhike. He would be the one to run away. Don't you ever run away from me. You're my assistant forever until you die. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Why are you licking yourself? Okay. Focus. Sorry. Thank you. It's very cute. Mary <laughs> was a talent. Mary. Focus. <laughs> Mary was a talented dancer working for stage. Sorry. Working front stage. Not for stage. <laughs> stage was not her boss. She a dancer? Working front stage at the Lido de Paris or Lido de Paris. I don't know. Probably Lido. You'll see when it's my turn. There's kind of a theme here. At the Paris Hotel in Vegas, as well as in Australia and Hawaii. She was merely in search of a break with every intention to return home later. Merely. Like a meerkat. Exactly. Meow. So a blue van pulled up while Mary was... I'm going to ruin your mood so hard with this story. (laughs) Try me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Here I go. <laughs> a blue van pulled up while Mary was standing with another couple who was also hitchhiking. The driver was Lauren Singleton. The couple refused the ride, but Mary felt he looked like a family man and accepted. It's a techno hour. It is. Oh, it is. You know what? Free soundtrack from our neighbor upstairs. Yeah, our, we ha- I mean, we think we have a new neighbor. They've been very into techno. Last night, um, the beat dropped, and I'm sitting here like, I recognize this. <laughs> and then uh, the the beat really kicked in, and I'm sitting on the couch going, She stole my broccoli casserole recipe eight years ago and claimed it was hers. <laughs> He was listening to that TikTok, or she was listening to that TikTok. Like, she was at a club. Yes. Like, full blast. And then they played it again. At the club on TikTok. Uh, yeah. Uh, just fully, fully just internet drama blasting. <laughs> Carolyn and Helen endorse his drama. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, Try not okay. to have a spit take here. I took too big a sip of my ginger ale. So this is the morning of September 29th. Right. Mary Vincent. Mary Vincent. to Los Angeles to live Driver is Lauren Singleton. Blue van. Blue van. Blue van. Lord Singleton. Despite. Not Lord. Lawrence. Lawrence. All right. <laughs> Despite seeming like your run of the mill middle class family man, Singleton was known for having a temper and being quite the misogynist. Oh, aren't they all? <laughs> His second wife had divorced him and his teenage daughter fought with him often, eventually cutting him off and never reconciling. In the past, he'd been convicted for aiding in the delinquency of a minor and alcohol abuse. Mm. Not sure what aiding in the delinquency of a minor is. Helping we'll, them be naughty. Okay, sure. So after probably a short like giving journey, them alcohol or drugs. Yeah, probably. That's probably what it was. Okay. After a short journey, Mary lit a cigarette, which caused her to sneeze. I too. Singleton reached over to touch her neck and asked if she was sick. Mary, rightfully so, didn't like the physical contact and pulled away, but soon fell asleep once he didn't try anything else. Um, yeah. When she woke up, she realized they were not heading towards Interstate 5, oh. but instead back towards Nevada. Okay. This pissed Mary oh, off. I, yeah. And naturally scared her. She found a sharp stick in the back of the van and pointed it at Singleton and demanded he turn the van around and head the way he had originally promised. 
Singleton apologized and turned around, heading towards I-5 as promised. He reassured her he was just an honest man who had made a mistake. Spoiler alert, that's not true. Uh, a little while later, Singleton stopped the van to relieve himself on the side of the road, and Mary got out to stretch her legs as well. Is he doing a tinkle? He's doing a tinkle. Okay. She noticed her shoe was untied and bent to tie it. Here is where Mary Vincent's nightmare began. No. Yes. Whoa. Singleton came behind her, punching her in the back of the head, and then using a hammer, he beat her until she fell over. Oh. He, Shiza. He forced his gross old man penis into her mouth, and made her perform oral sex before dragging her back to the van where he tied her hands behind her back and raped her repeatedly, threatening that if she made a sound, he'd kill her. I was really hoping that Mary was going to be the bad guy here. N- no. I don't know Mary why. is the badass here. Um, okay. So he drove for a while longer before pulling off to the side of the road. He dragged Mary out of the van and cut her hands free. He ordered her to drink an unidentifiable alcohol from a plastic jug that made her feel dizzy. He raped her repeatedly once more until she lost consciousness. When she regained consciousness, he was still there, ordering her to lie on the side of the road while she begged to be set free. He began to mock her, saying, You want to be set free? I'll set you free. Singleton went back to his van and returned with a hatchet. Hmm. Mary fought to get away, but Singleton held her down. With several strikes of the hatchet, Singleton cut off Mary's right arm. Oh, God. Okay. This took a very dramatic turn. Yes. This is this it one gets more a, dramatic. This one in a direction I did not expect it to go. Then I don't know why. You're with several me. more, oh. he cut off her left arm from below the elbow. Okay, so now she's armless. She is armless. Oh god. Mary stayed conscious through the entirety of her dismemberment. So she felt all of it. He then shoved her down an embankment into a culvert, following her down only to shove her into a concrete pipe. Naked and losing blood. Yeah. Here is where he told her, there, now you're free. And he left her there near death. No. However, Lawrence Singleton underestimated Mary Vincent. Don't they all? Shoving the bloody stumps of what was left of her arms into the dirt to help stifle the bleeding, Mary pulled her body out of the pipe without arms and back up the embankment. Following the sound of traffic, naked and holding her bleeding severed arms above her head to help keep the blood and muscle from falling out, she walked the highway in search of a good Samaritan. (gasps) She walked for three miles before the first car. A couple in a red convertible saw her and horrified by the sight, sped off, leaving Mary to continue to walk for another couple hours before two women saw her and stopped to help. Okay, but like, true question though. What would you do? Like, what would you seeing do? Seeing a naked, covered in blood, holding her arms up, holding her, what's left of her arms up, above her head, uh, just dazed and walking down the side of the road. I mean, I feel like you would have to stop. Well, these two ladies did. Go girls. So they wrapped her arms in towels from their car and drove her to the nearest airport to call an ambulance. The only thing Mary could get out was, he raped me. That's what she could focus on. Oh, my God. Not the fact he cut her arms up. So that's a good indication for how much rape affects women. Yeah. Or a freaking hammer. Mary Vincent spent a month recovering the hospital with parts of her leg needing to be used to reconstruct her arm for prosthetics, thus ending her promising future as a dancer. While in the hospital, Mary also was able to give such a detailed description of Singleton, his neighbor recognized him and called the police. hey Continuing to be the badass bitch she is, Mary testified against Singleton in court with her newly fitted prosthetics. She gave disturbing detail of her attack and aided in putting Singleton away. During the trial, Singleton insisted he was innocent and claimed Mary was a sex worker, referring to her as a $10 a night whore. Regardless of his insistence, he was found guilty of kidnapping, attempted murder, and rape and sentenced to the maximum penalty, which at the time of the attack was 14 years. That's it? That's it. On his way out of the court, he leaned down and whispered to Mary, I'll finish the job if it takes the rest of my life, leaving Mary to live in fear for years. Oh my God. Singleton was the model inmate and was allowed parole after eight years. No. Even though his own daughter pleaded with the courts not to let him free. Yeah. That she feared for her own safety and fled her home. Authorities recommended she get a restraining order 
So a piece of paper that would have given him her information, her exact whereabouts, but told him, stay 300 feet away from her, please. Like, no. (laughs) So she refused and just went into hiding on her own. So did Mary Vincent. Mary tried to live life normally, but her ordeal haunted her. She struggled to find the courage for everyday activities. She got married only to end up divorced, constantly plagued by the memories of her trauma. Yeah, you don't say. Once free, Singleton attempted to sue Mary, accusing her of kidnapping him with the intent to rob him. Oh, No court would take his suit seriously, and it was dropped. He was probably just trying to find her. Yeah. Towns all across California refused to allow Singleton to live there. Good. um, Enraged by the court's leniency, so he had no choice but to live in a trailer on San Quentin grounds um, for the duration of his parole under a curfew and watched by guards. I mean, he shouldn't even live there, but... No. Um, He joined AA and claimed to be sober. He faked sympathy for Vincent, claiming he vomited several times and couldn't sleep. Mm. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Once free from parole, Singleton moved back to his home state of Florida, where he was arrested in 1990 for petty theft. He was sentenced to two years, but only served a fraction of that time as well. This guy's a piece of work. In 1997... A painter working on the house next door to Singleton saw a horrifying sight through his window. Singleton, naked and covered in blood, was stabbing a woman so forcibly the painter could hear her bones splintering with each thrust of the knife. Oh, fa. Uh-huh. This woman would not be as lucky as Mary Vincent. <sighs> Roxanne Hayes, a 31-year-old sex worker, had been lured to Singleton's home with the hopes of earning a measly $20. Oh, my God. And was brutally murdered on Singleton's couch while he stood soaked in her blood when the cops arrived. Mary Vincent, still in shambles from her attack, claiming to have not smiled in 21 years, plagued by depression and constant PTSD and night terrors, stood before her attacker one more time to testify against him again. Oh, my God, Mary. This time he was convicted and sentenced to death. Thank No longer given the opportunity to get out on good behavior. I don't normally say go, yes, yeah. For that, but mm, yeah, yay, yay. Um, Lawrence Singleton would die in his cell on death row in 2001 from cancer. Oh, Mary Vincent guy. would go on to, <laughs> yeah, right. Mary Vincent would go on to have two sons, ultimately turning her life around for the better. She began to heal and, for, and form close relationships with her family and friends again. Vincent also began to paint, draw, and sketch despite her disability, with some of her art valued at upwards of $2,000. Yes, queen. Nowadays, she is happy to just be known as Mary and not the victim of Lawrence Singleton. Wow. Mary freaking Vincent. They're really going for it. It's a party up there. Yeah. So my source is. Yeah. The Amazing Survival of Mary Vincent by Laura Allen. It's a Ranker.com article. Mm. Mary Vincent Chilling Crimes article. And a Morbidology. 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 That's a fun word. Mm. (laughs) Morbidology. Uh, article called Mary Vincent Left for Dead by Emily Thompson. Well, snappity snap. Yeah. That one was a doozy. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly. I told you. You gave me a lot of description she, I didn't I ask mean, for. She, just, I just, I mean, she, I can't. She's a fighter. The, you know what? That's what she is. With the, with the no arms and the dirt and the no arms. And she climbed out with the no arms and then she... Gotta ride, no arms. (laughs) She managed it. I'm just very... You okay? (laughs) I get my period and I can't move. And this woman... Right? Has no arms. I'm like, my back hurts. (laughs) Please. Cool. (laughs) I know, I'm really glad that you are blasting music when we're trying to record our... Yep, 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 Our podcast, our art. We're trying to record art here. Our art. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you quite the uh, story. I'm I'm in. I can imagine you know this story. Really? Yes. Oh, okay, fun. Okay. Often referred to as the cruel mistress of the haunted house, Madame Delphine LaLaurie. Ah! Okay, sorry. I love this. Oh, God, this is gruesome. Okay. Yes. Born on March 19th, 1787 in New Orleans to a large, wealthy, and politically powerful family... It is no shock, the evil that followed. Because she's wealthy, politically powerful. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so in 1825, she married French 
physician, Louis Lalaurie. Mm-hmm. Uh, this would be Delphine's third marriage. Her first husband, Don Ramon, passed away when Delphine was pregnant with their daughter, Borquita. I'm sorry? Borquita, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not confident. Borquita, I hope. But I say it with confidence. <laughs> yeah, you say it with your whole chest. It's fine. Her second husband was named Jean Blanc. Uh, and during their marriage, Delphine gave birth to four more children. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Named. Okay. Marie-Louise Pauline. Louise Marie Laure. <laughs> Marie-Louise Jean. And Jean Pierre Pauline. Well, remember, these are French names, so... They all have the same freaking name. So, but you're saying them wrong. They're French. Marie-Louise, Pauline. Yeah. Louise-Marie-Laure. There you go. Marie-Louise, <laughs> Jean. Jean-Pierre, Pauline. Okay, they're good. That's, they all have three names. Yes, <laughs> it's just three and names. Most of them are Marie-Louise. She Marie puts Louise. them in a fishbowl. She pulls them out and she goes, we got another Marie-Louise. There's two Marie-Louises. There's three Marie. I'm confused. <laughs> There's so many. How does she know? How does she know who's who? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Jean died in 1816. Oh, so one less to worry about. Jean, not Jean. Jean. Oh my God. There's too many French. You are names. French. Jean. <laughs> <laughs> you are. That's literally your language. <laughs> Nobody's keeping up. Jean is the second husband. He died, not okay. Jean. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, she gave birth to those kids, and then he died. Um, <laughs> back to Louis. Um, they met because one of Delphine's daughters had some deformities <laughs> along her spine. Oh, no. And she brought her to Louis, who was a doctor. Is it Louis? Louis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Shh. <laughs> say it. Say it right. Okay, well, I will. I just didn't want to be pretentious. So, uh, Louis. Not pretentious to say names correctly, Timothée Chalamet. <laughs> I'm doing it again. <laughs> Timothée Chalamet. Okay, so anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> what the hell's going on? This music is. I know. Mystical. It's, it's mystifying me. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Okay, so, uh, Louis. He used all sorts of medical equipment that some would see as torturous and disturbing objects. Oh, no, no surprise, Delphine's daughter did not get better. But Delphine grew very attached to Louis, even though she was nearly 20 years older than him. Delphine got pregnant again, so Louis was left with no choice but to marry her. In 1831, Delphine purchased what would be infamously referred to as the Haunted House at 1140 Royal Street. Can't wait to go. We know it today as... La Lorie Mansion, in the heart of the French district in New Orleans. Uh, Louis and Delphine were very unhappy together in this home, fighting constantly, and eventually, Louis packed his bags and left town by 1834. This drove Delphine to madness and allegedly violence. Maybe I'll drive myself to madness. Oh, what a good band. Spin it in circles. I love that song. I love that album. It out. Just, yeah. Does anybody listen to Lucius? Lucius? Luscious. Lucius? 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 You know. Yep. You know you know who, who we say. Yeah. Anyway, rumor has it, she took out her aggression <laughs> and heartbreak on the enslaved people in her home. Mm. Yeah. There is one particular incident from 1833 where an eight-year-old enslaved girl named Leah fell to her death in the courtyard from an open window on the top floor. This sparked an investigation, which led to all of the enslaved people working at the LaLaurie house to be set free. She inevitably purchased them all back, one by one. Oh, God. Yeah. She's fun. Mm -hmm. On the morning of April 10th, 1834, a fire broke out and completely destroyed the house and exposed that at least seven of those enslaved people were starved, tortured, and chained in the upper half of the building. Some having said to have had their bones broken countless times. I'm so sorry for all these descriptions. Yeah. But um, they're necessary for the awful. Yeah. Uh, had their bones broken countless times and reset in unnatural positions. So when they tried to move, their limbs remained crooked and bent and their movement mimicking that of a crab. Oh, my God. Others were said to have holes drilled into their heads and a wooden spoon sticking out, which was assumed to be an attempt to stir their brains. What? Another claim was that of someone having their skin peeled back to expose tissue and muscle, 
and another with their intestines removed from their body, wrapped around their waist. <sighs> Some covered with honey and black ants, and the remaining were found dead. Uh-uh. A crowd grew to observe the horrendously tortured <clears throat> humans, growing angrier and angrier with Delphine and appalled at what they witnessed. When Delphine was not arrested for her abhorrent behavior, the crowd transformed into an all-out mob, seeking vengeance by completely destroying the remainder of the house. Good. Story has it, the fire was started by an enslaved woman who was chained to the stove in the kitchen in an attempt to expose Madame LaLaurie and her cruel antics. Jeez. So LaLaurie's life after the fire is not very well documented. It is said that she fled New Orleans during the mob, escaping by water to Mobile, Alabama. Thank you for saying it right. I learned from you. Thank you. How to say it correctly. Thank you. Uh, and eventually exiled herself in Paris. According to the French archives of Paris, Lullerie died on December 7th, 1849 at the age of 62. Bye, bitch. Um, now, a lot of these stories are passed down through time. We don't know how true they actually are. Mm-hmm. But a lot of accounts do say that she tortured uh, the people that were enslaved in her home. So I'd say probably likely. Yeah. But, you know, we don't know for sure. Yeah. There's no official documentation of it. I mean... So it's just hearsay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I oftentimes see the black community saying that slavery was probably a hundred times worse than we even thought it was. Yeah. That's the scary part. Yeah. So it was probably it, more like La Lurie mm-hmm. than we would care to admit. Well, because slavery itself was even whitewashed for us. Yeah. To handle the guilt. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, we don't want to make you guys feel too bad for keeping humans... As property. Yeah. Um, So in the aftermath of the fire, while builders worked on rebuilding, a book called The Haunted House of the Rue Royale. I'm still saying it wrong. Yeah. Anyway, The Haunted House of the Rue Royale (laughs) by Jean Delavigne in 1946 stated many human skeletons were found beneath the house in all sorts of positions. Helter skelter, barely covered with soil, shreds of fabric still adhering to their bones. Some of the skulls had holes in them. Mm Mm-hmm. So it verifies the stories. Sure. In 1894, La Lurie Mansion had been converted into an apartment building. <laughs> There's a lot of history to this story. Sorry, yeah, in advance. That's okay. But um, and a tenant was brutally murdered in his room. It was assumed that he was a victim of a robbery, but nothing of value had been missing. When police interviewed neighbors and friends, they claimed that he had been struggling with spirits in his home. The victim expressed his concern that there was a demon in the home that would not rest until he met his end. Mm. Briefly, in the mid to late 19th century, the mansion was a school for African-American girls. There were reports that girls would approach their teachers with tears in their eyes. They would roll up their sleeves and reveal scratches and bruises on their forearms. When the teachers would ask, who did this to you? The girls would always have the same response, that woman. No, oh, okay. Without ever knowing the story. Okay. Of La Lurie. Mm-mm. Previous owner, Annie Elsass, uh, she said on an episode of the Travel Channel show, Portals to Hell, that I watched with uh, Jack Osborne. Fun! Mm-hmm, that when they moved into an apartment on the property during the 1960s, they found all of the beds pushed to the middle of the room instead of against the wall. Hmm. She said that she often heard screaming at night and begged her father to sleep with the lights on. One evening, Annie was standing outside the home and saw a young African-American girl sitting on the corner of the top of the roof, just watching her, swinging her legs. Mm. Other apartment occupants have said to hear unexplained moans and groans, disembodied screams, smell burning human flesh. Oh, God. uh, The sound of chains jangling and scratching noises heard under the floorboards. Okay. Most of these experiences, if not all, were only experienced by children. Until late one evening, an immigrant dock worker came home and on his way up the stairs discovered that he was blocked by a large black man bound in chains. He screamed for the man to move, but the apparition did not budge. When he went to push the man out of his way, his hands moved through him and the spirit dissolved to mist. Oh, that's very dramatic. (laughs) Yes. People who have spent the night in the mansion report waking in the middle of the night to find a woman with long red hair glaring down at them as they slept. This same figure is reported by people passing by on the streets below, seemingly staring right through them as they walk by. Many believe this is the spirit of Delphine Lalaurie. Hmm. Carol Anderson, 
who is the current caretaker of the home and lives in an apartment on the property, says that the kitchen makes her the most uncomfortable. She says the kitchen door often flings open and shuts on its own. You can even see the doorknob turn on its own. No, I don't like that. Nope. No, no thank you. Carol's daughter, Lisa, who helps with the caretaking of the mansion, said that when they were installing the fax machine, she sent herself a test fax that said, Hi, Lisa, to her, like, the fax machine at her home. Right. And when she got home to see if the fax had been sent, the fax said, Hi, I am Madame Lola Ray. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Well, she's very technologically savvy. <laughs> she can type. <laughs> okay. Lisa also claimed to see a young girl peering out the window onto the street. Uh, in the episode that I watched, Lisa showed them a picture uh, of one of the bedrooms with what appears to be like this blob-like creature at the end of the bed. I took you can show me? Yeah, I took a picture of the TV. Cool. It was on because I was like, oh, this is spoopy. I literally don't know what it is. Oh, the blob in the yeah. foreground? Like that brown blob? Like, what is that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know how to... They were, like, taking pictures of the house for, like... I don't know how to explain that. It doesn't look like a person, but it's weird. It's, like, creepy. I'll post it on Instagram. Yeah. People can t- comment on it. Let yeah. us know what you think it is. Creepy blob. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a running motif that owner after owner have claimed this mansion to be cursed. Once run as a pub, it was forced to shut down a few short years later. Um, it is said that an elderly man who once occupied the home and died in it just a few days after moving in is said to still haunt the premises, searching for $10,000 in gold, which was discovered in his belongings after he passed. That must be nice. <laughs> Others have found misfortune with health, sanity, and wealth. One owner was sent to an asylum. Another fell into a coma after getting into a bar fight. Then finally, the most famous of its previous owners, Nicholas Cage. Right. Who purchased the home after Hurricane Katrina, lost the home to bankruptcy, and was stripped of all his possessions in New Orleans only a year after buying it. What? That happened? I didn't know he went yep. bankrupt. It is currently owned by a Texas energy trader who uses the mansion as a weekend home to entertain clients and friends. Uh, and fun fact, Kathy Bates played Madame yep. LaLaurie in American Horror Stories Coven. And it was horrible. 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 Um, so like, that's the that's that's one of the only uh, seasons of American Horror Story that I truly could not watch certain scenes, and they were always Lollary scenes yes. where she was torturing enslaved people. Yeah. All uh, it was messed all, up, horrible. And to find out that they really didn't exaggerate her that much mm. makes it even worse. Yeah, or at least they went by story has it. Yeah, uh, version of Lollary. Right. Which, I mean, we still don't really know the truth. So. Right. But pretty horrific. Yeah, nonetheless. yeah. Not nice lady. No. Would have uh, been a massive Trump supporter. <laughs> Probably. Um, so my sources were Wikipedia. Yeah, good old wiki. Ghostcitytours.com feature called The Haunted LaLaurie Mansion. Mm-hmm. Um, another feature from nolaghosts.com called The LaLaurie Mansion, House of Horrors. And, of course, like I said earlier, this episode of uh, a show called Portals to Hell on the Travel Channel with Jack Osborne called La Lori. Very fun. Yes. I think she might have been on my list, but. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, that one was a, that one was a doozy. Yeah. <laughs> that was rough. I was feeling kind of barfy. Yeah. Reading all that uh, stuff. Yeah, I was feeling kind of barfy listening to it. <laughs> so we had a pretty barfy episode. We had a barfy episode. Yes. Filmed, filled with filled with limbs. Yes. And no limbs. Literally when you were, the reason why I said our we have a theme here mm-hmm. is um, because it was just disgusting. Yeah. This the, episode the is theme disgusting. Of, yeah, it's disgusting. Congrats. Congrats. You made it. You were here, guys. So maybe we should have a how wonderful. Maybe we, maybe we maybe should. we need a how wonderful. Yes. Um. Oh gosh, you're gonna laugh at me. Um. Am I? My how wonderful today. Yeah. Is my vibration platform that I bought. Oh god. <laughs> um. It's this thing that you stand on and it vibrates really hard, basically like vibrating all of like the lactic acid in your body, and loosening you all up. Uh-huh. Um, and it feels really nice for my back because I do actually have back problems. Yep. So I wasn't kidding before when I said my back hurts. Uh, it hurts all the time. 
It sure does. Um, when I use that, it doesn't hurt for good. a little bit after it. So I need to get good at using it every day because I think if I'm consistent Is it still with making it, you like kind of motion sick when you get off of it? Yeah, a little bit. Not like not like enough to like deter me yeah. from it. But um, but yeah, I have has, vertigo, so it was not for me. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it has a lot of benefits um, that I've heard. It, it has uh, it benefits if you suffer from like anxiety or PTSD. Mm-hmm. Um, supposedly that helps with that. Um, it's apparently good if you want to lose weight. Um, I don't know if just standing on it is going to. Yeah, be I don't really but, get how that works. Uh, apparently, um, it's good for cellulite if you want to get rid of that, or if you don't care, who cares. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just, it has a lot of benefits, but for me personally, I want to use it for my back pain and, um, it helps when I've used it. So I'm going to keep trying and see if it helps more permanently rather than temporarily. Good. Apparently it, it sits in a lot of chiropractic offices too. I've oh, never really? used it when I've gone. No, but, um, I've never been a chiropractor. Yeah. I've, I've heard that they have a lot of those in, in those offices as well for back pain. It's, it's interesting. Should, should we post what it does to your butt? No. Oh, but it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Her butt just like my jiggles like it's just a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> Yucky. Yeah, it is very funny uh, to watch. What's your how wonderful? I mean, I already kind of said it. I'm going to say it again. Uh, I get to drink at the end of this week. Oh, that's pretty wonderful. My dry January will be over. <laughs> Are we going to like next Monday when we're recording? Yeah. Is our wonderful again going to be this? this we're drinking. Glass, this glass of alcohol we have. This, it sounds problematic, but you know what? I, I did it. It was my idea. It was a bad idea. <laughs> I shouldn't have any more ideas. I, 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 I had no benefits from it. I thought, you know what? I might might lose a couple LBs. Uh, my skin might clear up even more. Um, I might, you know, have less anxiety. I might sleep better. I might have less acid. None of those things have been true. I think, uh, I think the greatest lesson I learned throughout this month is um, control. Yeah. Yeah, I, think that was kind I of, didn't quit. I didn't quit. I quit yeah. everything and I didn't quit. And that's the only thing I'm taking away from this. Yeah, I thought uh, I journaled about it because I'm a dork. You journaled about not drinking? Yes. Oh. Um, and I journaled about how uh, I never realized um, how easy it was to have control over drinking. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very easy. Never, never thought that I had a problem with no. it. But um, it definitely... If, if alcohol was presented to me, I would never, ever say no. Oh, I definitely say no. You do. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. No. Um, so it was kind of a nice opportunity for me to realize that I'm in control. Yeah. Um, and that I can say no. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of, that's been kind of a cool experience for me to just be able to uh, practice self, self-restraint. self well, I'm, I'm very happy for you. So <laughs> <laughs> there's this list online that's like, all of the food that you should eat to eat to live to a live to a hundred. And it's like pasta and red wine. It's not pasta. I thought, well, okay, well, that's Italians. The, yeah, Italians do eat pasta. Um, but red wine was on there. Yes. And I was like, that's good to know. It's good for your heart. It's good for your blood. Like, yeah, it was mostly like legumes. It was like no cheese, which, pff, sorry, fat chance. but <laughs> yeah, fat chance. You can shave off 10 years for that. <laughs> Take 10 years. I'm eating cheese. <laughs> I'm eating cheese forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, cheese and pasta. I can't give up. No, I don't know how. But they did. Do. We watched. We watched Zac Efron's uh, TV show on Netflix where he traveled places. He went to this place in Italy that was known for having the most um, cent centenarians. Centennials? <laughs> Cent- no, <laughs> centennials. <laughs> no, I don't know what that. The, uh, the most people in their hundreds. Yes. There you go. Um, and the they were doing a scientific study because these people literally ate pasta every day of their life, and if eating pasta every day of their life. Um, contributed to living into their hundreds. And the conclusion was not no. Not no. So eat pasta, guys. <laughs> drink wine. That's Enjoy like, your life. Unless unless motto. unless you're an alcoholic in recovery, then don't drink wine. Don't do not do that. We're so proud of you. So proud of you. Sorry. Don't drink wine. Sorry, sorry for making sorry. this awkward. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, but yeah, wine is a delight. I can't wait to drink it next week. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be so good in my mouth. Yeah. I mean, hey, you have every right to never do this again. Never doing it again. I might, but that's just You me. do you. I am never doing it again. <laughs> uh, that's totally allowed. 
Um, so should we pick our topics for next we week? We should not forget to do that this time. We forgot last we time. We forgot last Sorry. time. Sorry. Yeah, we forgot last time. So you didn't even know until we started today that we were doing True Crime and Paranormal. Yep, you're welcome. Here we are. You're welcome. Surprise. Nobody yelled at us. Nobody yelled at us. That's a good start. Yet. They might yell at us. Is it a good thing nobody yelled at us? Does that mean just nobody's listening? (laughs) Probably not. This feels high stakes. (laughs) Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't like it. What you have? Oh. I I have celeb deaths. I have true crime. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, you just did celeb deaths last week. I just did true crime this week. Well, this is what you get, guys. That's what you get. Next week, it's going to be pretty... Death. (laughs) I already know what I'm going to do. Is it death? Oh, well, yeah. Death and dying. Well, true crime doesn't necessarily have to be death and die. No, nobody death and died in my story. Yes, there was that lady at the end. That we oh, the lady at the end. What's yeah. her name? Roxanne Hayes. R.I.P. Roxanne Hayes. You deserved better. Yeah. Way better. Shiza. You just wanted $20. You were probably just trying to feed a kid. Probably. Oh, man. Well. Oh, they can find us places. You can find us at HowAwful.com. That's where all of the things nope, are. that's not us. We're at How Awful Podcast. How Awful Podcast.com. <laughs> See, I'm not good at this. Uh, uh, we're, we're on all of the social medias that have banned Donald Trump. That's my new favorite thing, favorite way to put it. Hopefully and it sticks. By that, I mean Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube. You can search, well, y- you can search How Awful Podcast on YouTube. Yes. Uh, and find transcribed episodes for your heart of hearing heart friends. Of hearing friends. Um, thank you, Becky, for correcting us on um, our verbiage. When yes. it comes to that. Heart of f- hearing is the preferred. Heart of hearing is the preferred. Not hearing impaired. You are not impaired. You are just glittery and special. And wonderful. Yeah. Your uh, other senses are heightened. Fun for you. Yes. So uh, you also, we, we mm-hmm. talked about earlier. Patreon. You can email us. Oh, yeah. You can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, give us money. Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> Patreon.com. Is a place that. Wait, you but can is it howawful.patreon.com? Nope. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, dear. We're, it's patreon.com slash howawfulpodcast. That's it. That's, that's the one. Pay us. Come join our cult. No, we can't call it that. Why? Because it's what uh, my favorite murder calls it. Oh, well, I we didn't know can't that. can't call it that. I don't listen to that show, so I didn't know. Just come join us. Give us your money and we'll give you more. We'll give you fun things. Come be our friend. And yeah, and you can email us at how awful podcast. podcast. <laughs> it's just like I'm very unsure of myself this episode uh, at gmail.com. Yes. And please tell us your stories when you email us. We yeah, so know. just email us. So just be like, I am Madame Valerie. Actually, I want you to email us just yeah, to say hi. So, so. Just to say hi, hello. Don't um, be shy, people. Yeah. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy. We want you to come be a friend. I don't like that. Okay. Moosh. Moosh runs our Gmail account. So, um, yeah. So, sorry if uh, there's some gr- <laughs> grammatically incorrect sentences. <laughs> sorry if uh, <laughs> the response is food. Is laundry ball. Yeah. Laundry ball. He loves our laundry ball. Laundry ball. Laundry ball. Miss Bianca. Mr. Bandit. These are his toys. These mean nothing to anything. We are boring them. <laughs> I'm Who having, are you? I'm having a blast. Who I'm are Tanya, you? I'm Tanya Lee. I'm B. Come join us forever and ever. This is how awful. We Dumps like a truck, truck, truck. <gasps> That's like what? 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 All night long. Let me see the song. song. Why is the cat in a thong? As always, we've been B and Tanya Lee. Our logo was created by MJ Savard and our theme music courtesy of Nikki Lou.